I'm not going to be a terribly long, but I do believe that there's a wonderful passage of scripture that ties all of this in. We are going through a series during the Lenten uh, season. Uh, how many of you know that it is Lent? Amen? Amen. Amen. And Lent is uh, the six weeks that lead up to uh, Resurrection Sunday, uh, and we are going through a series uh, that is called Intimacy. Uh, understanding that uh, for many of us, what I pray and hope will be a reality at the end of this season is that we will be in such proximity with God that we will not have to wonder what God is asking us to do, but we'll already know it because we are in intimate relationship with God. And how many of you know that you can't be in an intimate relationship with God and not be in an intimate relationship with your brother and your sister? Oh, uh, got quiet in here today. I know some of us don't like people. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, we, we, we don't like people. We, we, we 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 uh we just the kind of me mine and me mine and and, and me. But how many know that's not that's not uh that's not scriptural? Hello, somebody. Amen. Amen. So Jesus, you know the one uh, who we follow. <laughs> Jesus said this, John chapter thirteen, verse number thirty one. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him and himself, and will glorify him at once. Boy, that sure was a handful. Amen. Let me read it in the message version. When Jesus had left, he said, Now the Son of Man is seen for who he is. How many are glad when you can see Jesus for who he is? And God is seen for who he is in him. For the moment God is seen in Jesus, God's glory will be on display. For in glorifying Jesus, God himself is glorified. Which means there's glory all around. So children, I am only with you for a short time longer. You're going to look high and low for me, but just as I told the Jews, I'm telling you, where I go, you are not able to come. But let me give you a new command. Listen, love one another. In the same way I have loved you, love one another. This is how everyone will recognize that you are my disciples. When they see the love you have for one another. Tell your neighbor, can you love me? Can you love me? Like I need to be loved. Like I need to be loved. Mm. Now, some of you, I told you to bring your man with you last week. I just missed out, man. Joe, this is just a joke. Father, bless your word now. It's been read for us, the people of God. Hide it in our heart. So we will not sin against you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of God say amen. amen. Now as we press on into this series on intimacy, I can't help but be captivated by the unequivocal command. How many know it is not a request? It is not a multiple choice exam. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. It is a command. Jesus said I give you a Those got that ride or die. 
Right, right, right. That ain't what Jesus is talking about. No, no. I'm loving you because you're part of my hood. Yeah, yeah. The United States of America. Yeah. <laughs> Ukraine. Yeah, yeah. Palestine. Yeah. Hunter's Point. Yeah. Iron Triangle. Yeah. The Deep East Oak. Yeah. <laughs> That's not the kind of love that God is talking about. And when the church forgets the kind of love God is talking about, then we will be unable to fulfill His command. That's right. Can you love me the way I need to be loved? That's right. How do I need to be loved? I need to be loved with the love of Jesus. Yeah. Not with your love. Keep your love to yourself. That's right. That's right. Because your love is pretty shady. <laughs> Most of the time. All the time. Mm. Your love is conditional. Come on. That's right. Come on, come on. Talk to me. Your love got streams. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Your love comes with qualifications. <laughs> with conditions. <laughs> How many of you know that God's love is nothing like that at oh, all? Thank you. Can you imagine if God only loved you? If you look like God, yeah, 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 yeah. acting like God, hmm. thought like God, let me tell you how God's love works. God's love works that the more you fall in love with God, God's love will transform you to look like Him. Come on. Yeah. That's somebody that is, that is slipping right through some of y'all. What are you talking about? Man? The more you fall in love with God, God's love will change the way you think. Right. Yeah. It is not the other way around. That God will not love you until you change the way you think. No. God will love you, and while you are changing, it is a result of God's love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and whosoever will believe in him should not Before he loved you yeah, yeah. with a sacrificial love. Yeah. But God loved you so much that he gave you, he put himself fully on the line just to give you the chance, yeah. listen to this, the chance to say yes or no. So God loved us so much that he's even willing to let you say no to his love and it won't change the value of his sacrifice. Yeah. Now how does that fit into what we're talking about today? Well, uh, you and I are a people who live in a culture and systems and structures that have very selective love playing itself out. Both interpersonally and publicly. And I want to submit that as we move into the season of Lent, that the structural challenges that all the love we have for God vertically to be transferred horizontally into relationships of appropriate intimacy. Now understand, child of God, that any authentic intimacy with God requires intimacy with one another. You cannot say, I love God, who you don't see, but can't figure out a way to love your brother and sister that you see all the time. That's why this whole business about uh, I love God, but you know I, I, I'm cool without the church. <laughs> uh, sorry. Again, that's your gospel, not the gospel that Jesus hung on the cross to make sure was efficacious for everyone who wanted to participate in His work. I want you to appreciate that our works of intimacy with God help create the capacity for us to be intimate with one another. And all across the country, hundreds of faith congregations are striving and struggling, preaching, praying, acting, wrestling with this idea. What does it mean for me to love my brother and my sister like myself? Jesus has shown you and I on this journey towards Lent that in order to love, you have to be willing to sacrifice a whole lot of things to love a whole lot of folk. I know some of us, ah, ain't nobody worth that. 
You better not hope, or you better hope folk don't say that about you. And there's something we always think is everybody else. Well, if they would do this and if they would do that, can you imagine if everybody was saying if they, if they, if they? And that's kind of the country we have today. Personal responsibility is the, the kind of undergirding uh, theme for all of us. I just saw on my way uh, 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 out the house that the banks have gotten sued again by the federal government for conspiring to manipulate interest rates. Twelve banks. So while you and I sit around here talking about personal responsibility, the banks don't believe in that. And they show taking all your money in line too. There is no such thing as personal responsibility disconnected from communal, relational responsibility to one another. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? Yes. That when you make a decision to be intimate with God, how many of you know intimacy requires proximity? I can't be intimate with you from a distance. <coughs> Get up close to you. Please learn your name. Enter into your life. You can't love folk you don't know. You don't know any form of incarcerated people, then it's going to be easy for you to tell them to get themselves together. You don't know any moms who have had to bury their children. It's going to be easy for you to talk about how parenting is the reason why this world is going to the dog. If you don't know any LGBT folk, it's going to be easy for you to try to tell them what they should do, how they should feel. I tell folk all the time, if you want to tell anybody anything, make sure you meet at least a hundred of them first. Somebody say amen. Amen. Just how you live, it may not apply to everybody. It don't mean you have to change what you believe, but save your advice until you at least talk to a hundred folk. That's quiet up in here today. Amen. 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 But it's the truth anyhow. That if you don't know folk, how can you give them any advice about their life? Yeah. How I many know when you don't have a relationship with folk, the truth sounds like fussing? Yeah. That's just. I don't know. 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 You won't take care of people you don't think belong to you. You can't give to others when you don't think they deserve what you have. Intimacy then requires a transformation that is reciprocal in nature. And understand, child of God, that when you and I are intimate with God, the scripture says that glory is all around us. That God knows how to show up in the middle of Right. And maybe if you have a whole lot of hell going on in your life, you need to stop looking outside and start taking a look about my intimacy yeah. levels with God. Because God, if I can get closer to you, yeah. how many know nothing can separate yeah. me from the love of God? When was the last time you pressed deep into intimacy with God? And then I always know that when you get close to God and deep intimacy with God, God will not tell you to become a hermit. Right. <laughs> right. God's going to tell you, you got to go forgive your, your mama, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Yeah. You got to give them another chance. The closer you get to God, God forces you to go reconcile with your brother and your sister. God forces you to put yourself out of a place of of people's lives. Why? Because that's what Jesus had to do. Jesus could not efficaciously deliver our salvation staying up there next to God in the divine order. The divine uh, what, what is the, the divine economy of God. And Jesus had to step out of his place 
place of security and privilege in eternity and make himself vulnerable to being hungry. Now, I just want you to think about this for a second. Jesus participated as in the life of God in the act of everything being created. Think about this. Never knew what it meant to be hungry. Eternally, he had no sense. Then all of a sudden, he stepped down into the world and now he got to sleep. A God who never sleeps nor slumbers now got to take a nap. Come on. The God who needed judgment and justice to nations for centuries and millennia now is on a cross letting the very folk he created take his life. That's the kind of love. When we talk about mass incarceration, we ask you to do these little texts. Some of you like text. <laughs> Live free. 
free from gun violence, incarceration, live free from depression and abuse and domestic violence and, and poverty and, and, and unemployment. We, we're trying to create all of these, these spaces that we can live free. And that is what we're supposed to do because Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And if I set you free, you are free indeed. That is the right of every child of God. Understand, my brother and my sister. That the way we live free is to be in intimate relationship with God and with one another. This is my hope and prayer for us. Is that we can take this thing way more seriously than we take it. Because do you not know that if every Christian in the world committed to not killing another Christian... I'm talking about inter-religious violence. I'm talking about if Christians over here commit to not killing Christians in other parts of the country, soldiers would have to get out of the armies today. Because I can't bop, drop a bomb on Iraq because there's Christians living over here in Iraq. I can't shoot up neighborhoods in East Oakland because there's Christians living in the neighborhoods. But we don't take Christianity is serious enough. The claims of a crucified God, we don't take it seriously enough. We think it is multiple choice exams. So I'll pick love everybody when I'm at church. But when I'm on my job, it's a talk and talk world, Pastor Mike. I got to eat on the evening. But it's in my marriage, as long as they put the toothpaste cap back on the toothpaste and keep the toilet seat down. <laughs> oh, they bring me a glass of water, don't raise the voice too loud with it. <laughs> when you love someone, how do you know you're willing to go the extra mile? Whatever it takes. Let me close one more time with the words of Jesus, because his words are better than my words. This is how everyone will recognize that you are my disciples. When they see the love you have for each other. Stand with me, everyone, as we prepare.